All right, geometry students, this is the last video of the unit, last video of the chapter, last video of the semester. Are you ready? Okay, it's not the last one of the chapter. Uh, it's the first one of the next chapter, but that doesn't matter. It's uh, it's 8-1. Uh, we tack this on to unit, the unit with chapter 7 in it. You'll see why by the time we get done with this, and you'll go, why did the book do it that way? All right, it's called geometric mean. And look, it all starts off with this type of... Uh, algebraic statement, which is all we've been doing this unit. It's about proportions. What's special about these proportions with geometric mean in them is that these two elements, you see right here, this uh, denominator and then this other numerator, are the same. So um, that's kind of a very specific situation. We're going to see under what circumstances of similar triangles does that happen. Because when that happens, think about when you make the next uh, cross multiply statement, you're going to have a times b equals x times x. Uh, and then you get this this funky thing when you solve for x. If a times b equals x times x, then the way to find x is to square root that product, a times b. And that's got a bigger name attached to it. That's called the geometric mean. You may have remembered what we did the um, first section on proportions. These were called means, these two here, and these were called the extremes. Uh, that's when this term comes up again. We call this the mean because it's um, the same here and here. Geometric mean, different than arithmetic mean. Uh, now, this part's kind of important. The lesson will involve answers that result from taking the square root in an equation. The exact form of those answers is written as a radical. Radicals are often written in simplest form, like uh, in your book or on the calculator, but we're not expecting you to do that. Uh, let me show you an example real quick, because this is going to happen a lot. All right, for example, if I had to find the um, geometric mean of 2 and 10, one way to do that would be um, take 2 times 10. What? Where'd the answer come from? I want 2 times 10. And then I would maybe have to take the square root of that. Now if I do this on the calculator, I'm going to get something funky. Like 2 times the square root of 5. Um, that would be the same thing as if I had that in a proportion. Like if you had the solve command and you had a um, proportion that would lead to the same thing. Notice how it's going to do that. Notice this would be the same thing as what I just had above. Yes, it's all that's going to say this. Oh, and of course it's going to give me two answers because it's um, going to consider the positive or negative one when it's solving. Well, isn't that special? Uh, 2 square root 5, you're going, hey, wait a minute, it's supposed to be the square root of 20. Well, one way to always check those out if that's getting annoying to you is to find the decimal answer for this, which is control enter. Oh, yeah, it's 4.47. And if you're not sure if that's the same, do this and go control enter. You get the same uh, approximation, then you're pretty sure you're right. I bring this up because I think this is going to happen a lot when you're comparing uh, with what's on the board maybe or in this video or in the back of the book um, and you will probably have an answer like this and the book might have an answer like this. Uh, you're not wrong. I just realized those are the same. Okay, uh, example one. Find the geometric mean of these two things. Okay, so 2 and 18. So the quickest way to do that is just to do this. 2 times 18. Boom! 6. Uh, 3 and 9. Square root of 3 times 9. Bam. So this is 6 and 3 square root 3. There's nothing wrong with 3 square root 3. It's just probably not the way you would have thought to do it. Yes, I would advocate for making these uh, the work of the calculator. That's the square root of 36, which you know is 6. Uh, 3 times 9, that's the square root of 27. That's fine. But you know what? That's the same as this. So any of these answers are fine. Okay. All right. So here's where it comes up in the geometry. If you draw an altitude in a right triangle, so we start out with a right triangle. A, B, C was a right triangle with a right angle at C. And then they drop an altitude from C to be perpendicular with the hypotenuse. That happens more often than you think. And what happens in that situation is, if you, look about, if you think about this carefully, there are now three triangles in this picture. The big A, B, C, the sort of medium-sized triangle A, C, D, and a little tiny B, D, C. The punchline here is that all three of those triangles are similar. If you think about the original big sort of black triangle and ADC, which they've broken out here as red, both of them have a right angle in the smaller triangle D and in the bigger triangle C, and both of them have angle A. So by AA, they're similar. Uh, same thing with this triangle and the big triangle. They both have a right angle, and they both have angle B. So by AA, they're all the same. So we even know things like this little angle here at C in this triangle is the same as A over here, and this angle at C is the same as B over here. Because uh, we have similar triangles everywhere. So what that does is, if you're trying to set up proportions of 
you know, hypotenuse to long leg and this triangle equals hypotenuse to long leg and this triangle. You get a lot of these sides, like AC I just mentioned there, is doing the same, or sorry, is in both proportions even though it's doing different things. Like, okay, what did I just say there? AC is to AB, if I'm looking at the big triangle, that's the same as, uh, that was long leg to hypotenuse. In the smaller triangle, that would be like um, long leg, AD to hypotenuse AC. So there's a couple different ways I could be looking at that. Anyway, I'm going to get proportions like this where I get two of things that are the same, like the X's and the previous geometric mean thing, and two other two other numbers of which then AC is the geometric mean of. Um, okay. So yeah, this theorem is just saying when you when you draw this altitude, you're going to get a whole bunch of similar triangles. All the triangles you see are similar. So uh, are these triangles similar? How are they similar? Um, so similar triangle. They say all three. They do say all three here. All right. So we have big triangle. This is easier than it looks actually. EHR. I'll call that the big one. Well, in that triangle, what's the right angle? EHR. H is the right angle. So now we talk about the medium size one. In the medium size one, J is the right angle. Angle E in the big triangle goes with well, angle E in the medium size one, and the other letter is H. And that's similar to a small triangle over here where J is the right angle. So I'm doing it so this is the right angle each time. That's the right angle. Middle letter is the right angle. And here again, middle, middle is going to be the right angle. I'm going to call this for the rest of my video here, the big triangle, the middle size triangle, and the small size triangle. That's not always obvious, or we don't always care about that, but I think it's easier to, to track what's going on. All right, so in the small size triangle, what's the same as angle E? Well, it's either H or R. It's definitely not H, because that's a really tiny angle, so it must be, oh wait, it is H. H is a little tiny angle, that's what we want. Because uh, we want R in the small triangle, think, think about this, we want R in the small triangle to be the same size angle as R in the big triangle. There's no R in this triangle. Uh, look through that again, and you should see how the angles are gonna line up. All right, so here's where this geometric mean thing comes into play. If you think about how this side H here, this altitude, uh, compares in these two triangles, in the little triangle, I could say X over H uh, equals, in the medium-sized triangle, H over Y. Or you could even think of it this way. X in the little triangle corresponds to H in the medium-sized triangle as H in the little triangle corresponds to Y in the medium-sized triangle. That actually works either way, and they both produce this same um, proportion statement, which leads us to believe H is the geometric mean of X and Y. Let me say that again. Look over here. H is the geometric mean of X and Y. If you forget that, no big deal. You just have to go back and reconstruct the similar triangles the way they're supposed to work out, but there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, there's another one that comes up. This one they call the altitude part. So this H part here is a geometric mean of the two parts that the big hypotenuse has been cut into. H is the geometric mean of X and Y. Okay, so back to the big structure again. These two things can also be written as uh, geometric means. And again, it's because we're flipping around um, similar triangles here. But B turns out to be the geometric mean of X and C. And A turns out to be the geometric mean of Y and C. Um, so, of you know, when we drew that original picture, of you know the, the original right triangle with three things coming out of one great big right angle. It's these three pieces. Wow, this would be like there. Is this the A? I think it was. And this was the B, and this was the H. Those are the three things that are geometric means, and they're geometric means of stuff that happened down here. Uh, the things that happen down here, they call one of these things X, one of these things Y, and the whole big thing C. They're geometric means of different pairs of those, and it's actually not that hard to remember. H is the geometric mean of X and Y, B is the geometric mean of Y and C, and A is the geometric mean of X and C. Again, if you forget that, um, of course this is going to be on the theorem sheet, but if that doesn't um, make sense to you when you see a picture, there's nothing wrong with going back and thinking, okay, how are these triangles similar, what goes with what, because you're probably pretty good at that already. This is just a little bit of a shortcut. Uh, okay. These theorems are simply an application of proportionality between similar triangles, right? So we just, I just mentioned that. Okay, so let's do this again. T is a geometric mean. That one I think is the easiest one. That one splits up the big hypotenuse into its two parts, and it's those two parts that are the 
geometric means. These ones on top, these big outer sides, they're both going to use k as something they are the geometric mean of. But then the other thing I fill in here is the part of the hypotenuse, of the original hypotenuse they're attached to. So u, I put r, and with v, I put s. You notice these are all the different pairings you could possibly, you could possibly think up of those three letters at the bottom. So here we go. Uh, jr is 9, let's just fill these in, and ej is 16. Well, then if I took the geometric mean of those two things, I'd get hj. So this is the geometric mean of 9 and 16, whatever that is. I'll do this later in the calculator. R to E, well, hello, let's just add those up. That's just 9 plus 16. Don't let that scare you. RH is the geometric mean of 9 and the whole thing, 25, from that pattern. And HE is the geometric mean of 16 and 25. Gosh, can I do these in my head? That's, that's actually 12. That's actually 15. Whoops, that's an equal sign. And that's actually 20. Check me with the calculator, but I think I got those. All right, find these. Um, all right, this is a little bit different because they're not asking you for the geometric means all the time. They're asking for other stuff. 12 was supposed to be the geometric mean. Again, if I'm going to use the shortcut, which I might as well. It's supposed to be the geometric mean of x and 9. So how do you solve this? Well, I can square both sides. 144 is supposed to equal 9x. That makes x equal, oh gosh, think about this for a second. That's the hardest part. What's 144 divided by 9? You'd think I would be good at this by now. 16. I was. I just didn't want to make a mistake. I've made so many mistakes in my videos lately. All right. So that's 16. Oh, you know what? This looks exactly like that now. Uh, why isn't it exactly the same? Oh, that's interesting. So I could fill the rest of these out. <laughs> but that's 16. That's 9. This has to be 15. And this has to be 20. Funny examples. Uh, check me out there, but uh, this side over here has to be the geometric mean of 16, 25. I just did that on the other page, and that's it. Okay. I feel like after this, I want to make up a new example. Give me a second. Okay, I tried to make a particularly nasty example, and I put some stuff. Okay, I tried to make a particularly nasty example to see uh, if this would be a little, a little bit scarier for you, a little bit more like what you might see on a test. Uh, okay, so 7 is supposed to be the geometric mean. I'll continue to use the shortcuts. It's supposed to be the geometric mean between 5 and x. Well, that just means that I can square both sides. And x is 49 fifths, which is not particularly a friendly number. All right, so this is 49 fifths. I'm going to remember I'm going to need the whole entire side for finding geometric means that are out here, x, z, and y. 49 fifths is almost 10, right? That's 9.8, so I'll call this 9.8, because I know you love decimals. Okay, we'll call that 9.8. Then this whole thing is 14.8. So y is the geometric mean of 9.8 and 14.8, and z is then just gonna be the geometric mean of 5 and 14.8. So let's do these on the calculator. And you can do it in one big step. You can say square root of 9.8 times 14.8. It's probably going to give me a decimal because these are already decimals. It's not going to give me a nice square root over here, which is fine. If you haven't, oh, couldn't tell by now, we're pretty nice about that. So we'll just say y is approximately 12.04. And then z, do the same thing. This is going to be 5 times 14.8. So you can actually just do that, highlight that, and change this to 5. I get 8.6. So z is really close to 8.6. All right, I think that's it. I'm running out of time anyway. All right, thanks a lot. Last video of the semester. See you in class.